trying to get footage like this was not easy. Not only did you have to spend months practicing to be a pro at flying one of these, but you also had to spend more months figuring out what parts to get and learning how to build one yourself. And if you are a busy content creator like me who doesn't have much time to learn how to make your own epic flying beast of an FPV drone, it can be quite disheartening knowing that you may never get around to flying one and capturing these beautiful perspectives. Fortunately though, I've been able to fly FPV drones for some time now without sacrificing much of my creative time on projects and other life goals, all thanks to an FPV company called iFlight. iFlight manufactures pre-built bind and fly FPV drones. And for a very long time now, they have been my number one go-to for pre-built FPVs. And I've used them for every single one of the FPV clips I've captured. And this is the new Nazgul Evoke F5. It's iFlight's newest and sexiest 5-inch quad. Powerful enough to carry a GoPro Hero 9 and incredibly well put together. What's up guys, my name's Ben TK. Welcome back to another video. At the moment, Melbourne is once again back in lockdown for the fifth time. Like a lot of other creators out there, I have a ton of brand stuff to get through and it's very hard when we keep going into these lockdowns and we just can't get out to beautiful places to film, but I'm gonna do my absolute best for this video and it should be a lot of fun. And today I'm excited because we're talking about one of my favorite brands, iFlight, who make pre-built FPV drones. Now, as you can see, I've got two iFlight boxes on the table here, which are the brand new Nazgul Evoke F5 five-inch freestyle drones. So iFlight are actually pretty generous. They give you a lot of parts. With the Nazgul F5 drones, you get heaps of spare propellers and believe me, you need those because you hit bushes. <clears throat> my voice, I don't have COVID, I swear. I've been vaccinated. <clears throat> cool. Be cool. Chill. Chill. You also get some battery straps, two antennas, a USB-C cable, an Allen key and a screw for mounting on a GoPro, some propeller nuts and some battery pads. So these are the two new Nazgul Evoke F5s and you can see the different shapes. This is the X-Frame which allows for better performance with freestyle acrobatic movements but this frame has the possibility of capturing the propellers in your footage when the GoPro is tilted a little lower. The other mode is the DC or the dead cat frame, which is built to avoid having propellers in your footage with the arms angled slightly further back. This has a slight effect on the freestyle performance, but it's really not much at all. Now compared to one of iFlight's older drones, this is the Titan. This one isn't very weather sealed at all. It's pretty raw. You can see all the wires. With their new Nazgul's, they've added a side panel here, which is making it more water protective. They've also got an upgraded battery holding system at the back, um, which allows you to plug the battery in much more securely. This one just has a wire sticking at the back. So iFlight have really innovated their designs. This is one of the most beautiful drones I've seen from them. So now that we've had a look at these two new beautiful Nazgul Evokes from iFlight, let's take them for a test flight and see how they perform. Let's have some fun. Let's rip some air skids. Now before I can fly, I need to activate the DJI CADEX system which controls the digital video feed to the goggles. Because I'm using a Tango 2 controller, I need to set up a few switches and buttons in Betaflight first. So first I check my arm switch which seems ready to go. By default angle mode is activated as a safety precaution so I disable this on the neutral mode of the left switch by just dragging this bar back. This now allows me to fly in full acro mode. Then I set up the beeper on the right switch which is handy for if you lose the drone and you need to find it. And I also need to change the channel mapping from AETR to TAER1234 because if I don't do this with my controller the drone will do the wrong movements to the sticks I push. But yours may not need this. Alright guys for the first test we're doing the freestyle test. So I'm out here today with my buddy Tommy. He's helping me do How's some going? filming to try and capture the footage uh, of me flying around. And you're just getting into FPV as well, aren't you, with the Cinewood? I am, I am. I'm one of my second Bumblebee. The first one went into a tree and just having fun <laughs> with it. <laughs> I was there when that happened. Now I'm nowhere near a professional at freestyle flying, but I do know enough to put it through some tests and compare it to my previous FPV drone. And I was surprised that with a GoPro Hero 9 and a very heavy battery, it was still able to perform incredibly well. And I didn't feel any prop wash at all whilst falling and diving. So I'm using 6S batteries and this is the 6S version of the drone. They are 1800 mAh and they're quite big and heavy. Uh, if you're doing freestyle flying you should use something a bit smaller with maybe 1500 mAh. These will give me a lot of flight time but they'll also weigh the drone down but that's all I have for the moment so that's just what we're using. the 
1800 mAh batteries, I get about six to seven minutes of flight time, which is awesome, but because of the weight, it makes maneuvers more sluggish and it's harder to pull away from objects if I need to avoid them. But for cinematic flying where I need a bit more time in the sky, these are very useful. Oh man. How was it? It's it's very responsive. It's um definitely a lot quicker than the Titan with its rolls and everything. Maybe it's because of the X frame. It's quick, dude. It's fun. It's awesome as. Oh, it's an absolute beast. It looked like you had so much control over it and I can't wait to get one. When I stop crashing slow drones, I'll move on to one of these fast ones. The next test was the cinematic test, but there was a big problem. I really wanted to do this in a beautiful location, but because we were in lockdown and we had a restricted distance we were allowed to travel to, all of my favourite locations were outside of our travel radius. But then, I remembered a place. Quarry. Of course. It was an old abandoned quarry, but flying here meant there was more risk of losing the drone, considering I'd be flying over water to get most of these shots. There was no room for error. So for the cinematic test, I'm gonna be following Pom in two different scenarios. The first scenario is gonna be a fast speed cinematic test, shooting through and tracking Tom really quickly, but in a cinematic way. And the second one's gonna be more of a slow movement test, just following Tom delicately through this beautiful area. since I started flying FPV and has seen me do a lot of flying. So he trusted me with flying in close proximity to him. All right, so that one was a lot of fun. Definitely got a good run on the last one there through the trees. I think I'm happy with that one for a fast cinematic shot. You almost killed me, you almost killed me. I can feel, on the back, feel the wind on the back of my neck. I was just trying to cool you down from the heat. <laughs> hey, I appreciate it. So now that we've done those fast cinematic shots, we're gonna try some much slower, more delicate cinematic shots. Here. If there is one thing about 5 inch quads that you should know, it's that they don't like to go slow. They are built for speed, so trying to fly this slow and cinematic was a challenge. Not only did I have to match the speed of Tom walking, but I also had to keep my elevation very consistent. And when you're flying this slow, it's extremely difficult. For the next slow cinematic shot, I'm going to fly through here as carefully as I can, follow, follow Tommy, and then shoot off over this edge and do a little uh, loop down the lake here. It's a bit nerve-wracking because of all the trees, but let's see how we go. Okay, so we just finished up capturing the cinematic shots with the Nazgul today, but there is a bit of an elephant in the room because isn't there another FPV drone that's pre-built and it actually flies really well? That's the DJI FPV and well, there's a reason why I don't own one of those and we're gonna chat about that in a second. Because DJI literally forgot who you are and sent a drone to every single creator pretty much on the planet except for you. Y yeah. Let's forget about what Tom just said. There are a lot of pros and cons <laughs> to the Nazgul and the DJI FPV and I'm gonna show you all of those right now. In all serious note, DJI, if you're watching this video, please send me your new Mavic 3 when that comes out. I'll highly appreciate that and I'll give you a great review and I'll fly it really well and give you some good footage like this video. Okay, let's have a look at the pros and cons. I'm going to be brutally honest about both drones. Even though I don't own a DJI FPV, I've done a lot of research on it. First off is the overall freestyle performance. The iFlight drones are pre-tuned by professionals before they are ready for purchase. And because of the well-balanced designs and weight distribution, they handle maneuvers extremely well. This is very important, especially when evading obstacles. The DJI FPV is more sluggish with its design and maneuvers and seems to be less responsive with freestyle. So that's one point oh, to the NASCAR. Yes. Oh. The batteries. For the Nazgul, if running a 6S 1500 mAh battery, you will get around 4 minutes of flight time maximum. The DJI FPV batteries last up to 10 minutes. That's ah, a massive win yes. for DJI. What? 
Oh. Now the camera. The DJI FPV comes with a built-in 4K camera with really nice colors. Unfortunately, you cannot shoot in cinematic frame rates like 24 frames per second. The stabilization in the camera is also a bit average. Usually when buying an iFlight FPV, you would additionally buy a GoPro to use with it, and this gives you the ability to use real steady go, a paid stabilization program costing around 99 US dollars. That gives you incredible post stabilization. Because the DJI FPV comes with a camera but also doesn't have the option for real steady go stabilization, which is a huge deal, uh, I'll give the point to both oh, drones. Yes. Next is build quality. With the design of the DJI FPV, there is a much larger potential for damaged parts due to weaker materials and an odd shaped frame. This means you may need to get it fixed more often and you may need to send it into a DJI repair center for a repair fee. Because of the flat style and strong carbon frame on the iPhone, like drones, they tend to hold up much better, especially when hitting objects underneath of the drone, and they can take a massive beating before they break. They can also quite often be easily repaired just by taking off some screws and swapping out the parts. You can also order these spare parts from iFlight's website. So the point for build quality goes oh, to the yes. Nazgul. Next is setup time. iFlight's drones by default are ready to bind to your controller and fly when you receive them. However, you do have to set up the GPS settings in Betaflight if your drone has a GPS system. And there may be a few extra switches you need to set up too, such as the beeper which involves learning the Betaflight program. The DJI is basically ready to go without too much setting up, except you do have to fix the screws on the controller to enable FPV mode. I love the customization options in Betaflight, but the DJI wins Aha, this one in yes. overall simple setup. Aww. Customization. The Nazgul has many options of batteries to use with it, from lightweight batteries with less flight time for freestyle, to heavier ones with more flight time. DJI only has one option. The Nazgul is made to mount any GoPro and Insta360 camera. The DJI FPV's camera is built in and can't be upgraded. Although you can mount a GoPro to the top with a 3D printed mount, but then you are spending more on a GoPro, adding weight and decreasing the aerodynamics. So the Nazgul oh, wins yes. here. Oh. And now lastly, the price. The complete DJI FPV system with the goggles, the drone, the battery, the controller costs around 1,531 US dollars. The Nazgul with a DJI Caddx Polar Vista Digital HD video system, God that's a mouthful, is 460 US dollars, but at a $300 DJI controller, one thirty-three 6S 1300 mAh battery, the $570 DJI goggles, and a $29 GPS system, and it comes to $1,390 US dollars. It's still a lot cheaper, but then we still need to buy a $364 GoPro Hero 9 to use with it, bringing it to roughly $1,754 for a complete setup. This is also without shipping added. So the price for the DJI FPV Aha, wins yes. here. What? Oh. Okay, so there are so many more pros and cons to each of these drones that it would just take 50 minutes to make a video. But it is worth mentioning that with traditional FPV drones, the batteries themselves have a steep learning curve. You have to learn how to charge them, how to discharge them, and you need to buy a battery charger, which you also need to learn a lot about as well. DJI drones, you just plug them in, charge them up, fly, and then charge them again when you need them, it's super easy. But here's my conclusion. If you are wanting to get straight into FPV as quickly as you can, with as little learning curve and setup time as possible, and with a lot of safety, then the DJI FPV is the one for you. If you're really serious about FPV and the way they fly, and you want incredible responsiveness and performance, then I would say, the traditional iFly Nazgul type FPVs are the ones that you should look at. Personally, I'm all about performance and handling, so these are my favorite kinds of drones, and this is what I'm gonna stick with for now. Now all we need is GoPro to bring out a 10-bit color camera. Come on, GoPro, you've been making these for ages. That would be an incredible day for sure. So if you guys like the new Nazgul Evoke F5 and you think you might be interested in one, I've left a link in the description where you can go to iFlight's website and have a look. And you know what? The sun's still out outside and it hasn't been sunny for a while here, so I think I'm gonna take advantage of that and I'm gonna go for a flight and drain these batteries. So, my name's Ben TK, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.